Tornado in the Commonwealth today. At least two twisters touched down in Western Mass, including this one in Springfield. Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick has declared a state of emergency tonight. He has also called up 1,000 National Guard troops to assist communities hit hardest by the tornadoes. Governor Patrick spoke about the devastation a short time ago. People are doing their jobs, and they've been very well prepared uh, to do them. And I know that the folks who are directly affected, they and their families, have had their lives turned upside down uh, right now. But people should, should know that these folks here are taking this very, very seriously. This is just some of the damage and destruction left behind on Main Street in downtown Springfield. Trees uprooted, roofs torn off, and partial building collapses. Officials from the Federal Emergency Management Agency are on their way to Massachusetts tonight to survey the damage. Here's the latest at this hour. According to the Massachusetts State Police, there are now two confirmed deaths, possibly four, according to the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, and at least 33 others injured. 19 communities have been affected, and right now there are nearly 41,000 and people without power in Hampton, Hampshire, and Worcester counties. A look now at live pinpoint Doppler 12 radar. Right now for Providence, Kent, and Washington counties, the tornado watch has been lifted. Eyewitness News has live team coverage tonight. Alex DePrado is live in Cranston at the Rhode Island EMA with a look at how Rhode Island prepared for today's weather. Catherine Sotnik joins us with a look at all the viewers who posted and sent us pictures and video from today's severe weather. But first, Chief Meteorologist Tony Petrock has been tracking today's weather all day long and he joins us now with a look at how things are shaping up. Well at one point we were very concerned about at least extreme northern Rhode Island that tornadic thunderstorm in Springfield and southern southern Worcester County uh, was getting very close. I want to take a look back at the radar our rewind which starts at around uh, two o'clock this afternoon. Draw your attention to the left hand side of your TV set. All of the action south of the Mass Pike and there's that small cell that went through Springfield producing a tornado and then it continued to intensify as it tracked off to the west. Now this is 515 in the afternoon and you see that cell and you see that little tiny appendage kind of a hook shape to it right in here. We call that a hook echo and anytime we see that in the Doppler radar it doesn't look like much but that little shape that little hook really tells us a lot and we became very concerned as the storm was tracking off to the east and it's why for a short time a tornado warning had had been issued for extreme northern Rhode Island, but as that storm continued to work off to the uh towards the east. It stayed just to our north and weakened and the tornado warning had been lifted. You know, on our Doppler radar, we can do so many things with it, including looking at storms and almost like a CAT scan in three dimensions. So what you're looking at is that same storm in the vertical in three dimensions and it was towering at one point up to 50,000 feet into the atmosphere. And we know when we look at these storms in three dimensions that those heights, uh, that's telling us that this is a real mean looking thunderstorm. And based on the radar signature, we were seeing the air rotating in the mid levels of the storm and that's when we became very concerned during our at least our early evening newscast at five o'clock that this was in fact a, a tornado forming and touching down near uh, Southbridge but fortunately that storm weakened as it passed just north of the uh, Rhode Island border in the meantime the storms have weakened and pulled offshore the tornado watch has expired lightning tracker showing the lightning strikes in real time now heading out towards Cape Cod which is cloudy warm and muggy in downtown Providence with a temperature at 68. So the trend for the overnight hours would be for gradual clearing by 5 o'clock in the morning, dry, breezy, and comfortable at 62. That should set up for some sunshine tomorrow morning. A dry start with temperatures between roughly 62 and 68 degrees. Still a lot to cover during our full weather segment. We'll take a, another look back on these storms and a look ahead to see if there's any more severe weather down the road. The full forecast in just a, a bit. The tornadoes that touched down in Springfield are rare. And tonight we are getting a close look at not only the damage left behind in Springfield, but at the tornado itself. Erin Kennedy joins us now with more team coverage. Tonight we'll give you a first-hand look so you can see exactly how violent this tornado was as residents are now left to pick up the pieces. Absolutely incredible video of one tornado to hit western Massachusetts as it slowly churns through Springfield and over the Connecticut River. Take a look. You can actually see this twister move over the water. White caps form and are pulled toward the center of the storm as the water is picked up, swirled around, and then spit back out. At its height, this storm was 10 miles high. Commercial jets could not fly over it. They had to fly around it. The first populated city to get hit by the tornado, 
Springfield, Mass. Not since 1954 has a tornado followed a path like this. From Springfield, it almost followed the Mass Pike East, at one point headed straight toward Boston. Here's another look at the same twister, this time caught from a live tower cam from our sister station, WWLP. It was just after 4 o'clock when the tornado moved through the downtown area, picking up debris one mile up into the air and dropping it miles away. In fact, the force of the tornado itself was so strong that video of the damage is almost just as incredible as the tornado itself. Take a look at the damage to downtown Springfield. Even sturdy brick buildings lost walls, bricks blown out, the inside side laid bare. Meanwhile, the damage in West Springfield is just starting to add up. As you can see, going across the Memorial Bridge into West Springfield, a tractor trailer flipped on its side, debris all over the side of the road. And then when you get into West Springfield, garages, roofs of houses peeled off, thrown like tinsel onto power lines, trees uprooted, debris everywhere. Some scary moments for the people who live in West Springfield. The whole storm coming, roofs lifting off the buildings. I was right there. I had to close the door and my buddy had to hold it with me. If not, we would have been sucked right out. The town of Westfield was not spared either, where there were widespread reports of homes without roofs and power outages. But that's not all. At least one school in Westfield was clobbered by the storm, leaving the kindergarten classroom shattered with part of the roof open to the sky. I was crying. Um, everyone was crying. People were screaming. People were puking. It was just disaster. It was very terrifying. The National Weather Service will be assessing the damage within the next few days. FEMA, meanwhile, is on their way to Mass right now. Erin Kennedy, Eyewitness News.